high quality Newfoundland shrimp. It's a delicacy that's now available at stores like this Fishery Products Seafood Center here in St. John's and most large supermarkets throughout the province. The development of this multi-million dollar industry has all taken place on Newfoundland's northwest coast. On this land and sea program, we're going to take you viewers through the many steps that yield this Newfoundland treat. So first, let's join Bud Gould and his crew as we steam to the shrimp grounds off from port -a -Chois. It's shortly after three in the morning when most of the over 40 shrimp boats have cleared the harbor in port and nearby Port Saunders. For Bud Gould and his two brothers, the shrimp fishery has meant a new prosperity and a new approach to fishing. It was just over 10 years ago when this all got started. At that time, the few longliners in the area were gill netting and there wasn't a great living at it. Then the Federal Department of Fisheries started to develop the shrimp fishery. The first discoveries of shrimp on this coast date back to the late 1950s. Then vessels experimenting for redfish were finding high volumes of shrimp in their nets. But a decade was to pass before any real effort was put into developing this resource. It was back in the summer of 1970 when three area longliners were chartered and rigged out with shrimp trawls. Later that summer, when the good news got out, four more longliners were to equip themselves with the expensive deck gear and ground trawl required for shrimping. By the end of the next year, 18 boats were into the shrimp fishery. They'd been eager to find an alternative to a slumping gillnet fishery, and here it was. Those early days of the shrimp fishery were exciting times, but also there were times of experimenting and uncertainty. Dragging was new to these fishermen, and there were many lessons to be learned the hard way. Gear tear-ups were a regular occurrence in those early years. Different types of nets and doors were used, as fishermen discovered how the gear reacted and where the best grounds were. Here's Bud Gould to explain some of the technique involved. You'll work the bottom, huh? keep a certain dip of water. I shrimp shift with some, uh, sometimes you find them in perhaps uh, 120 fathom, 100 fathom. Next time we find them 100, 150 fathom, you know? And you keep, uh, keep that dip of water. The sound is the most, sound is the most important thing, but and the radar, the radar, if I wanted to see what you're very off the land and everything like that. Good sound, the boys, one of the main things. Is that going to rack up? It's a tossing job. Gotta punch a lot of arrows. A bunch of lot of hours at a bunch, you know, you're waiting around for the nip to come back and you know, you're towing a line, tow with four hours or something like that. It takes turns, one fellow is still on watch and he's they tell him to keep around a certain dip of water. And you lay down for a spill and when each time is up, another fellow takes over for a spill. While most of the fleet has moved up to vessels in the fifty-eight to sixty-five foot class. Bud has one of the smaller draggers on the coast. He'd like to move up to a larger vessel, but finds himself caught between an almost inoperative fisheries loan board and federal and provincial governments that can't get together to decide the number of boats that should fish these grounds. Well, this one's a uh, 52 foot. Mostly built for gill, isn't it? Not too much power running on that. So, I guess I only the you gotta keep it a disc on the fish or you know get a bigger boat. They want to get them putting gear on them, have bigger gear and that kind of stuff and you can't they can't tow it. <clears throat> you run your motor hard and you can't tow the gear. The toys and everything else, now you got a job to job to do anything with it. You got no power for 
The boat's gonna stand up to it, isn't it? The boat's the one wasn't made for it. The only small boats on the time you push the gear onto them, they're on a 52 foot boat. They're only a half a foot and a half of the water. So they can't stand up to it. I know we built a boat for Gallant, and I'll whack a uh, set of doors on there, and uh, winch and gallows. It's not made for it. You can't stand up to it. And the mortars in the boat, the mortars in the boat, so it's not. Wouldn't, wouldn't enough power in the first place, not for dragging. So it was just, this was only just to start off dragging, looking for the... You know, we didn't, know, we didn't realize what it was like first. And now I guess you're going to stay into it, keep the dragging. And you got to go farther now, the shrimp was getting caught hand in. You got to go 50, 60 miles away, you must have... You got to have a bigger boat. How fast does this one steam now when you're towing? I mean, you mentioned a slow towing. Oh, she is she only two, two mile hour. Two mile hour, that's, that's you know, that's a uh, cam with her. Huh? You have no tow done against you. If you get towed against you, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna throw something over the side and see if you move. When it comes back, then you gotta tail some pound of shrimp. Well, it's only a matter of fish has no dirt in it. What they shove in those bags, and, man, it don't take very long. And then you, and then for you're back in the bunk again. So it's tiresome. You would think it's easy, but a lot better be working. You know, it's a lot better be working that fish. Hey? If you're getting uh, more fish, hey? cod fish or something like that, you most usually you're occupied all the time. Eh? You know, you're working that all the time. Eh? The shrimp is like as good one as uh, once a bit of shrimp on the go, eh? You take you make the line toes, you know, get the, get the tails and pound, you know, and, uh, and clean up in a half hour. Eh? You punch the hours out of you. As I read, but it's long hours. On this day, sorting the bycatch is a fairly simple job. There's a few cod, assorted junk fish that get thrown back, and some redfish. In the early spring, the few small redfish like these are kept for the lobster fishermen, who find these a great source of bait. Large bycatches of immature and small redfish were a major problem for this fishery in its early years. In recent years, this problem seems to tapered off. But now there's a new one, capelin. Although a bycatch may be viewed as merely a nuisance by those involved in this highly lucrative fishery, it's something that should never be overlooked. There's always that delicate balance that must be sought in fisheries management. Right now there are over 40 vessels from Newfoundland fishing this stock, as well as assorted New Brunswick boats, and more vessels want in. There's a need to protect the stock as well as the fishermen who've invested in the gear to fish it. The shrimp is going to get fished out. After a while, you know, it can't, this can't stand up to you. know, you're going to see a difference. You know, it's too, you get too, it's too many boats. I guess it could be too many now. You're starting off here in the spring of the year. You now you take 30, 40, 50 boats. You know, we haven't no big lot of ground. Puts anybody else on it, what we got. And especially if you start stopping putting us on one, putting us on one, on one leash or something. Just fishing for shrimp. The shrimp not getting the rest of the toss, eh? You think, no, you do got a chance because uh, you, you're fishing for a body and you change over to uh, ground fishing. And that gives, that gives the shrimp a chance to, uh, to rest up again. And spine, whatever. But if they cut steady and gives us one loose in there, you gotta go and punch that shrimp for all the year. And don't give them a break at all. Don't give a shrimp a break. You could be doing, I figured they could be doing a, doing a bad thing.
But the shrimp will be safe this day. Mother Nature has her own brand of fisheries management. She's brewed up a sudden little squall. And Bud, with his smaller vessel, will have to take back his gear after she's been towing for a little less than an hour. Although there's still been no move made by federal fisheries to restrict these draggers to just shrimp and not allow them to alternate to cod, it's caused fishermen much concern. While highliners of the shrimp fleet like Wade Lavers of Port Saunders have clearly been successful with just fishing shrimp, it's doubtful the entire fleet could operate this way. But fisheries management has many factors to take into account. Obviously, the stock has to be protected, but the fishing operation must be economic, and the plant must get a regular supply. The current government regulation requiring each shrimp vessel to land 75,000 pounds seems reasonable, but this figure should be reviewed constantly Catches like this are not difficult by any vessel seriously into the shrimp fishery, as witnessed by some vessels that last year landed over 200,000 pounds, and even one went over the half million mark. The handling of shrimp in plastic bags has been a recently new development. Up till some years ago, all shrimp was boxed, but handling problems developed with these boxes, and they were replaced by the simpler and more efficient plastic bag. Bud Gould's catch for the day was around 1,500 pounds. Early in the season, catches can go up over 10,000 pounds for the day, and recently a record catch of over 18,000 pounds was landed. But these high landings are only in the early spring when the shrimp are bunched closely during spawning time. Early spring is also a time of the year when a lot of cod and redfish gets landed by draggers and gill netters. For the gill netters, like draggermen, they also have a bycatch. It's nothing strange for these fishermen to land a few bellamer or old harp seals. Unloading facilities has always been a contentious issue with port and area fishermen. Recently, Fishery Products has improved that by installing a pump unloading system. So now it's shrimp loaded in the bag and cod unloaded by hand or the pump because you'll see no pitchforks ever used here. In most parts of Newfoundland and Labrador, unloading facilities are in a poor state. 
However, Portishwa is one community that can look with real pride to the way they handled every single species landed here. This is a high-priced, high-quality food item and must be treated as such. It's made for a big change to Portishwa and area and everybody wants to see that continue. Nobody knows this any better than Harvey Patey, for he's in charge of the shrimp section of the Portishwa plant. Oh, it's fantastic, good to tell you. There's a lot for the, for the employment uh, problem in this area. You know, it's, it creates a lot of employment. With your production area there now, uh, are you getting a fairly skilled workforce, ones who stay with it all the time, or is there a fair turnover there? I think the people that, uh, you know, who are there, you know, have a tendency to come back each year, so you're not getting that uh, high uh, a turnover. What's your yield off of shrimp? The shrimp? The 25 percent. <laughs> so right away, uh, uh, your price is, uh, you know, where you're paying, what, fishermen, 35 cents for a whole product. Mm -hmm. You're only getting 25? You're only getting 25 percent yeah. off of that product. We're paying 35 cents a pound for the shrimp. Okay. By the time, uh, by the time you take, uh, you take 100 pounds of shrimp, by the time you get your, uh, your finished product out of that, you're only getting 25 pounds, well, uh, approximately. Well, we have uh, five uh, uh, cookers, uh, Latham cookers, and uh, they're uh, fed through conveyors. We have men in the holding shed uh, uh, feeding them. From there, they're pushed through a, a steam box and uh, cooked for approximately a minute and a half. And as as they're cooked, they come out on on uh, rollers, which are rotating semicircularly, like and uh, and the rollers are rubberized, which force the shrimp down, and uh, and uh, the shell is uh, sort of pressed down into the roller and. Thus, we get uh, the shrimp peeled. When they leave the, the lathe from cookers, uh, uh, they, uh, the sh shrimp drop off into a chute that's filled with water, and, and they're uh, floated uh, through uh, uh, what we call our separators. This is where any bodies that might be still attached to the tail part of the shrimp are broken clear, and uh, from there, they're, they go to another conveyor where, they're, uh, where they go to what we call inspection built. We have uh, 30, uh, 30 ladies uh, there, and uh, their job is to uh, pick off any excess shell that might, uh, might go out on the conveyor, plus any uh, other foreign material. As the shrimp uh, Drop off the end uh, end of the conveyor belt, the inspection belt we call it. Uh, it's uh, fed again by conveyor to a, a brine tank. Uh, this is a 17% uh, salt solution, and uh, this is the last process before it's uh, before the shrimp is of course to the freezers. As the shrimp uh, pass through this, it's a continual flow, and from the time it enters until it gets the other end. They are frozen. When they, when they pass through the other end, they go out on a, a, a small vibrator, and there they're glazed. We have uh, water spray. There they're graded automatically. Uh, as you might have noticed, uh, the bars there are uh, a little farther apart on one end than they are on the other. And this is for uh, the larger shrimp to drop down through, and the smaller shrimp will drop at one end and the larger on the other end. And this is where we get our uh, four gradients. It's all according to, uh, to the orders that we have. A certain size shrimp uh, uh, might be packed in bulk. This is, uh, this is uh, what you, you see at uh, uh, 22 pound bags. The small packages are what, uh, 400 gram and uh, 500 gram.
And there we have it, high quality Newfoundland shrimp in its package. It's been caught, the whole thing done here in Newfoundland. But what about the marketing of this item? Joining us now is Rick Marr of Fishery Products Seafood Center. Rick, this is a fairly new item, I guess, for Newfoundlanders who have traditionally eaten cod for generations and centuries. How well is something like this received here? Well, it's uh, been accepted very well, Herb. Uh, people who know the product come here specifically to buy it, and they seem to compliment it very highly. And people who are not that familiar with it, who try it, we say, and they seem to come back and tell me that they've enjoyed it, and they, they try it again. You know. How does it stack up, say, with uh, other things that would compete with, say, for example, like your Texas shrimp or other things imported along this line? Well, uh, quality-wise, we, you know, we contend that the, uh, we have a beautiful shrimp, Newfoundland shrimp. It's not as large now as the Gulf shrimp, hey? Uh, it's somewhat cheaper than the Gulf shrimp. So overall, people usually tend to go for this one mainly for two reasons, for the quality and for the price. Places like the recently opened Fisherman's Catch have had about the same results as Fishery Products Seafood Center. Store manager Duncan Baird told us their sale of Newfoundland shrimp has grown almost 10 times since the store first opened. But while this increase in local sales is encouraging, it's a very small part of the larger sales program that's required. The Portage plant has processed up to 60,000 pounds in one day so a much larger market is essential. Mr. Etchigiri, we've just seen uh, that there's some limited marketing here in Newfoundland of the shrimp product, and that's starting to improve, but where are your major markets for shrimp? Uh, about 30% of our production is sold in Canada, and incidentally that's growing, uh, and the remainder, let's say 70%, is going into uh, Scandinavia, into the uh, common market countries, and uh, a growing market in the UK. Clearly the business of the, uh, the total processing here in Newfoundland is a very significant factor though, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. You know, you compare it with, for example, taking shrimp in the shell and, and, uh, and freezing it uh, in, in some of the effort in, in, in the province and shipping it off to the, to the market in the shell. Of course, you're losing a tremendous amount of labor, which is evidenced by the fact there are 150 people fully employed in the industry for, uh, for our efforts. So it is very important. And of course, it gives you a far better advantage in the marketplace to have a processed product rather than a uh, than, than non-processed. Summing up in a few words, how, how would you describe the Newfoundland shrimp industry then? Oh, I think it's very healthy, I think it's very stable, and I think it's got a very, very good future as long as we make the most of the, of the industry and we do all processing in, in the province. And that's been our look at the Northwest Coast Shrimp Fishery. It's a fishery that's grown in 10 years to a multi-million dollar industry. It's an industry that's seen small, underpowered longliners worth less than $30,000 being replaced by vessels that are now worth half a million. It's an industry that started from small shrimp grounds just a few miles off from port au to a major area that stretches over 60 miles along the northwest coast and out over 30 miles from the shoreline. But all the talk of fishermen catching a high-priced delicacy, shrimp, may lead many viewers to a false sense of economy about the fishermen in this industry. Sure, the Porter Schwa fleet has a number of boats now worth over half a million dollars. But how many of the other 40 vessels in the shrimp fleet are truly economic? Rising fuel and gear costs are just two items that have increased tremendously in recent years. In actual fact, very few of the fishermen are able to replace their vessels when the time arrives. Very few could get into 65 footers like these at their current catch rates. Yet our fleet must be replaced and fishermen must be given safer and more comfortable boats to work on. The shrimp price has to be governed by market conditions and at present rates our Newfoundland shrimp is very competitive with other food products. So a simple price increase is not the answer. The answer for the shrimp fishermen lies clearly with their ability to diversify and take other species besides shrimp.
Like the cod fishermen we saw on an earlier land and sea, these fishermen must move their vessels further offshore and further distances away from port. And so the major task lies with Newfoundland's economy and our society. We must work towards building a Northwest Coast shrimp fleet that is of the proper number and type vessel to harvest shrimp safely and economically. Then the current myth of the rich Newfoundland fishermen will become a reality, and that's as it should be.